Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it, Can You Hear Me Now? Because that seems to be the message that Chairman Powell was asking uh, with his eight-minute statement that he made uh, at, uh, at the Federal Reserve Conference in Wyoming, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Quote, Today, my remarks will be shorter, my focus narrower, and my message more direct. And the bear woke up from a nap. Basically, Powell was saying, ain't no pivoting going on here. And here's what the markets did for the week. The Dow was down 1,423 points. You can see that on the far left over here. After we got that, what looks like a Harami cross type of candlestick pattern on the weekly, we definitely got the follow through. We had a gap down, gap down over here on the S&P 500 after this potential reversal candle that got the follow through. And it was down 170 points for the week. And the NASDAQ composite similarly down 563 points. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the Dow, the S&P 500. We'll check in on the VIX. We'll want to talk about the breath. And today I want to look at um, United States oil, 12-month oil, and XLE, the energy ETF. Okay, so let's go back. I want to go back to the home screen. Here's the Dow Industrials. In terms of just my what I call my moving average view, so you can see what's been happening here just for the price action and the moving averages, etc. So down 1,008 on Friday. So let's take a look at the LA Wave picture. Here's my preferred count. Here's what I think is going on. There's an alternate that I'll talk about on the S&P 500, but right now I'm staying with this as the preferred count. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the first five wave move down, similar to what we had over here, a first five wave move for minor one, okay? So we are looking for minor one, minor one over here of intermediate wave three, okay? So that's where we're at, okay? So when I drill down and take a look at this move from the high here on August 16th, you know, we're looking at this price action. I'm looking at the 65-minute chart. There's a couple of things. Right now, I'm leaning into the fact that I think we are in the third minute wave to the downside, that we've had one, two, we got three. The alternate says we're not completing in, in minute wave one till down around here, maybe Monday morning, okay? That's the alternate. The reason I don't like it as much, the reason why I like this much better, Two reasons, okay? Number one, this corrective pattern over here, what just happened, dwarfed anything that happened in the move down. So it looks like something totally different is going on. Also, the breadth of the move that happened here versus the breadth of the move that happened here, this is stronger, okay? And we'll look at that when I take a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Okay, so this is stronger breadth coming after a much bigger corrective pattern, which makes me lean into this. Now, you look at this and say, well, here's where it gets a little confusing. Well, yeah, we've had a really strong move. Yeah, we, we are going to get, you know, we're going to work a five-wave move down in here, okay? Yeah, you always have, in, in, in the mode of wave, you got a five-wave. So, yeah, we've had this very strong first wave down. And when you look at it, you talk about strength. And, uh, I mean, look at the 30-minute chart. There was one bar that was that was kind of an up bar on Friday. That was it. Here's where Chair Powell started talking and had his eight-minute uh, statement. And then it just pushed all day long. All right, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Okay, here's the SPX, and again, this is the moving average view where I've got the indicators and the moving averages on here, and you can see down 141.46 on Friday, very strong move, and yeah, we closed, I believe, right on the low of the day. Yes, we did. We pushed right into the low of the day. Now, what are these, the, these little signals I've got? I talked about this with my members. This is a trend signal that I was given. And you can see where we got this since the first of the year and short-term breath signals that we got in here. And we recently got these. We got this uh, breath signal on Monday 
and we got this previous trend signal on the previous week. I think it was Thursday. Okay, so giving us a heads up that it looks like it was turning. And right now, it, it seems to be that's the case, that this thing is, uh, is coming down and coming down hard. So again, I've got the wave count exactly the way I just talked about it on the Dow. And this is my preferred count, leading diagonal pattern, contracting leading diagonal pattern. I know there's, you know, the parameters on this. I've talked about this aren't perfect. We'll talk about the alternate picture in just a minute. But just like on the Dow, you know, here's the picture of the 65 minute chart. It's the same thing that I've got in here. Uh, I'm leaning into this being, you know, one, if I can get it to highlight, there we go. One, two, and the third minute wave to the downside. Um, and, you know, when you look at this, you say, well, okay, third wave down. Here was a third wave. Here was a third wave. It's a little, it was, this, this whole move down in here was very choppy, very, very choppy. Here was a third wave, a little more direct, a little more free falling, just like right here. So, you know, it's a big question. What are we going to get right now? But uh, that's what we're looking at. When I look at the alternate picture, the alternate picture is this. And I think I talked about this once before is that it's an expanding leading diagonal pattern. And this fits all the parameters. You know, it, We've got wave four overlapping wave one. In, in a leading diagonal pattern like this, it, the motive waves can be either um, an impulse or a five wave move or a zigzag. So there's, there's a little more leeway in terms of that. Um, but two and four must be a zigzag. Four on an expanding four has got to be greater than two. Uh, three needs to be greater than one, and it is. But five, now here's the key, five needs to be greater than three. So here's where five equals three at 3312.61. So five needs to be greater than three. So my target would be, if this is in play, my target's going to be lower than 3312. If this is in play, there's a good chance we're going to go even lower than that as a part of this whole intermediate wave three. OK, so that's the picture. That's what's going on. And it doesn't matter which one you look at. It looks like we're into, uh, you know, hard down. All right. So let's take a look at the VIX and see what it's doing. OK, the VIX, the volatility index was up very sharply on Friday, as you would expect, up 3.78, closing at 2556. Now, the interesting thing, we were watching this. I kept looking, watching for closes above the 10-day moving average. And we got that right here on the 19th, which was a week ago Friday. Okay, But we had had that happen several times, fake outs, and got no follow through. Now, what follow through am I talking about? I'm talking about a second close, consecutive closes above that 10-day moving average to indicate a possible start and turn in place. Well, we finally got that on Monday. And then we got moving average cross. But sometimes even after that happens, you get some choppiness. Well, we didn't get that much this time. Now we've got this big, big push on Friday. I'm ex what am I expecting? I'm expecting more follow through. I'm expecting potentially something like this or over here. I mean, you never quite know what you're going to get. But right now, this seems to be in sync with what we're seeing in the market and where we're looking at from the Elliott Wave picture. Let's take a look at where we're at with the McClellan Oscillator. And let me pull that up. Okay, so right now we're sitting right here at severely oversold at minus 150. So we got, we stretched it down here on the 22nd and then we bounced back up here on the 25th to minus 28, back to what I call the neutral zone. And then we're back down to minus 150. So we're bouncing around a little bit in here now. But the summation index is kind of interesting. It's turned down pretty well. Now, after this big move that happened, you know, went into throughout July, where did this turn down from August 19th is the peak and it's and it's turned down. When did it turn down prior? Back over here, June 9th, leading to that bottom in the middle. OK. And then right here, April 8th, right here, January 18th, where it turned down, right here, November 15th. 
So, you know, we're getting some things that are in sync. And when I talk about the breath, this is what I look at all the time. This data feeds the McClellan oscillator data that I've got on here. Um, and so I looked at the breadth of the move that happened, uh, six, 6.5 stocks down for every one up on Friday in terms of New York Stock Exchange advances and declines, okay? And this measure here is advances as a percent of the total, and it was only 13%. Pretty, pretty strong move. I mean, you look at that from the universe, that means 87% of the, of the uh, stocks were down, okay? And we had, you know, it was stronger than what had happened in the previous week over here. And so on the 19th, when we came down, actually, I need to move this over. Sorry, I wasn't showing the dates. On the 19th, we had 5.9 stocks down for every one up. And then on Friday, six and a half stocks down for every one up. So much stronger in terms of the move. And that's what I was talking about when I was talking about the... Uh, the, on the S&P 500, why I was leaning into the fact that I think we're in the third minute wave. All right, let's take a look at oil, and I'm going to pull that up. Let's uh, let's go to USL here, which is United States 12-month oil. Why do I move to USL? I used to track USO, but then when they screwed around with their settings and everything back when we had that, when oil went negative back in April of, of 2020, I was like, okay. I'm not messing with USO. I know it was very actively, maybe still more actively traded um, uh, instrument than this is the volume on Friday, 116,000. It's not very much, but they still, price action wise, it still tracks oil very nicely. So here's what's going on. We had this move down from the high in June, okay? And then we've had nothing but choppiness. Well, here's the picture that I'm working. I think we've had a five-wave move up and we had a peak in oil, okay? Now, this, this may be, we may be, you know, like correcting and getting ready to resume. We'll see. But right now, all this choppiness to me looks like a sideways triangle, okay? In that I think we've got an ABC corrective type pattern going on in here. What does this imply and why am I saying that? I'm saying it because I'm seeing three waves. Three, 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 expecting another three, and then I'm expecting a small three. So this is the path I'm looking at to complete the B wave for A, B, C. That's what I'm thinking is going on with oil. And if that's the case, that's going to impact what's happening with with XLE and, you know, other oil stocks and that type of thing. We'll see if this plays out. Right now, it seems to be doing that. And let's take a look at XLE. It's it's similar but different. Where, where am I going here? Sorry. Uh, let's take a look right here. Okay, so the B wave is different here on XLE. And here's what I think is happening. Okay, I think we've got that A wave down. It's like a leading diagonal pattern. That's the way it counts best to me. And then we've got this combined WXY zigzag, deep zigzag pattern for B. Now, if that's the case, this is going to turn around and start heading, heading south. And it seemed like I was looking at something else. Yeah, I was. Okay, so uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Tom DeMarc and some of his uh, indicators. I like watching uh, Tom DeMarc's sequential cell setups in here. Uh, he got a sequential cell setup right here on July 28th of nine days. And then it's now getting out where it gets extended, where he talks about it getting, um, basically running out of steam is the best way for me to describe it. And he, you know, he talks about 13 days after that. And there's a certain pattern that he looks for. I don't want to go into all the detail right now. But basically on Thursday, I counted day 12. So I think we're getting really, really close to this running out of steam. And that kind of puts it in sync with where I think the oil USL is running out of steam, which would imply that you know, we're going to have another move that we're going to have something like this going on. And then we may resume. And how deep this goes and where this goes all depends on the patterns that unfold as it comes on down. 
Okay, that is it for today. If you felt like the video was helpful, give me the thumbs up on the, on the video. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll see what kind of price action we got. The volatility is here. And we'll talk to you on the next video.